Hello again, Murray the Pie Man here playing yet more of Star Trek 25th Anniversary. So, uh, if you remember the previous video, um, we completed a mission where we met Carol Marcus, and now we are uh, back um, on we, our next mission, our following mission, involved uh, Harry Mudd. So, we've fended off some Alassie pirates, um, two attempts at that, um, and uh, now we've met here. He's got a ship full of stuff, but the Alassie are after him for some reason. Um, the Alassie were a race, as far as I know, made up for these games and they do actually turn up again in Judgment Rights. I think they were a handy uh, race to have when you didn't want them to be fighting Klingons or Romulans or anything else. It gave us sort of a handy antagonist for, for the game. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on with the game um, and see how long it is before I have to start cheating. So let's have a quick chat with Mud. Tag, my friend! When have I ever given you this? There was the time that you tried to commandeer the Enterprise to sell wives to miners, and then there was the time Ooh, you stole yep. the Enterprise Ooh, look, to continuity. Us for androids who were holding you prisoner. Perhaps there have been a few minor misunderstandings. Don't push your luck, Harry. And of course, there was that time you uh, tried to steal the Starship Discovery during the Klingon War, and uh, murdered the captain a lot. Hmm. But hey, lovable rogue, lovable rogue. Right, let's have a wee uh, gander. There are shiny, multi-sided, spherical objects in this box. Odd-looking contraptions, small enough to hold in one hand. This lens, about the size of one's thumbnail, magnifies like a fine optical glass. This container holds small mechanical components unfamiliar to you. Lieutenant Buchard is standing Buchard around too. watching everyone else converse with Harry Mudd. Yeah, he does that. I think, oh, oh, that's my bag of stuff. We're not looking at these claws in the ceiling. Nope. I suppose I can't take anything. Done. There is nothing at the moment for me to... Done. Wow. I thought Mud would be kind of getting annoyed with that, but... No, we've managed to get that thing and that thing. Mm -hmm. You already have that. You already have that. I forgot I've got a tricorder. Here comes Spock. Spock with strike order. Here comes Spock. A small energy device with a flanged opening at the front, about the size of one's thumbnail. How big's your thumbnail? These are computer memory transfer media, probably designed for use with the alien computer system. Floppy disks. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. I suppose let's take a wonder. Let's see what's down here. No, doors work. Hmm. Unique, Captain. I believe these are self-referencing packed quantum cartridges. Of course. Power boosters. Oh, I've read about those, but they're just theoretical. Evidently, these are more than theoretical, Lieutenant Bukert. The energy initially released is infinitesimally small, but boosts itself until the power finally released is comparable to our photon torpedoes. The technical journals discussing the possibilities indicated it would create a weapon of greater range than those we have now, if not a greater punch. The machinery to deliver these cartridges would be an engineering feat as well, Captain. Mm, there you go, that's a thing. The control panel has power running to it, Captain. A weapons delivery system it appears to be an accessory tied directly to the alien equivalent of our ship's phasers and photon torpedoes. What's this green goo? Oh. It seems to be part of the loading system for the weapon. It is also fully functional. Mm. Unique, Captain. I believe these are... Power boosters! Evidently... The technical journal... The machinery... I can't pick up any of these things. 
This is much too heavy. Let's try using spot and up. No. I failed to see the three triangular. No, let's have a look around here. This is a thing. Again, let's scan it. Nothing to report. Nothing to report, Captain. Small containers of oddly colored liquids. This seems to be the main monitoring station for the beds. Above it is some sort of dispensary. Hmm, I think we're in a sick bay. Padded inclines. Nothing to report. Let's talk to McCoy. Are you religious, Jim? Is Harry Mudd... I can't think of it. You look troubled, Captain. Sorry if I was bothering you. I was just silently cursing the day I met Harry. Captain, count your blessings. We haven't met any salt vampires or deranged computers, blood-draining clouds, oh, cell-imploding sirens, Greek gods, or, or any of the other things that people keep telling me about in security. There's not much I wouldn't do to not have to deal with mud. To be honest, Lieutenant. To be honest, Captain, I thought most of that was rubbish. Hmm. This looks bridgy. It appears to be a view screen, much like the one on board the Enterprise. Nothing to report. Evidently, the alien's bridge, their centralized control. A closer look may provide more information. Evidently, the alien... Hmm. This is clearly the control center for the ship, Captain. I cannot deduce much information, but I do observe two things. Go on, Mr. Spock. This station definitely is configured differently from the one beside me. This shouldn't be surprising. After all, there are two stations. That may be, Doctor. But if you'll recall, all the Enterprise's different stations link into the same computer network bank. And... What else can you determine at this stage, Mr. Spock? These people have a fixation for the number six. And even divisors and multiple cans thereof. Threes and twelves in particular. I believe this may be the necessary first clue to understanding the aliens. I smell a puzzle. This station definitely is... This station definitely... You fail to obtain any... Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. This appears to be some sort of engineering... Ooh, not that. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Okay. Nope. Oh, I c c captain Jim, that doesn't look good at all. Harry, let me take a look at you and check whether that had some deleterious effect. No, you're all space aliens. You're little gray men from inside the hollow earth. You want to expand Just turn them into the pass. internet. Stay away from me. Deleterious effects. I guess I don't even need my tricorder to know that. You'll mind control me. Kidnap my children. Dissect my dog. If we can get him on one of the beds and get it active, I think he can be cured. Otherwise, he's likely to become increasingly violent. Stay away from me. Stun him. I don't think the phaser will have. Yaha! I feel I know you for what you really. Let's get Spock to do it then. Nick Pinch. Hey! 
All yours now, Dr. McCoy. There's nothing there requiring a ship's doctor. There's nothing there requiring... There's nothing there re... I certainly see nothing there ca... I failed to see the... I need to understand more about the aliens before I can make this bed and its instrumentation function. All right. Why would you want to do that? Wait, uh... There's a downside you can't abort once you've hit... Alright, let's hope... Save new game. Replace... Oh, it takes so long to walk into this room! Why? Why? Right, okay, that's... That was a screen. Arcord Fenton Mud. This seems to be the main monitoring station for the beds. Above it is some sort of dispensary. We won't be able to operate... We won't be able to operate in... I suppose let's have a... Look around elsewhere. Leave him here for the moment. So walk. But wait. Hang on. Nothing to report, Captain. But but he's in sick bay. Hurt, my friend! There was the Perhaps the Don't push your luck, Harry. But but Harry, you're how? This Saber ship life support generator has seen a great deal of use. It was never a reliable model, being prone to break down without warning. It is, however, properly connected with warning alarms for temperature, atmosphere, and radiation. An unusual matter-antimatter engine, reminiscent of the designs created by the Hupuin of Seganus IV. Hupuin. There seems to be a crane of some sort, Captain. Currently, no power is running to it. An unusual matter... As one would expect, Mr. Mudd has sealed the hatch with his personal code. We cannot enter his ship, Captain. I suspect that's a blessing in disguise, Mr. Spock. Yes. This room appears to have been the alien ship's engine pod. A ship-to-ship -ship access hatch, and it's... Nothing else in here. I still can't believe that they forgot to take him out of there. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is much too heavy to... There is nothing at the moment for me to do. There is nothing at the moment for me to. You look but see nothing of no. Oh dear! How soon before we're going to cheat, guys? But, but how? How is he there and here? He's in two places at once. Or there was some sloppy game design. You look but see nothing of note. A control console from which up. Mr. Spock, come take a look at this. this. Yeah, I think I've done this bit. This station definitely. Let's see if we could use some of these things. Dust and grease lifts off the surface, leaving this item clean as new. Dust and grease lifts off. Hmm. Dust and grease lifts. That's a degreaser. 
Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. What was the other thing? Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Hmm. It appears to be a view. Am I missing something? Maybe there's something I have to decrease. Harry Mud. Are you religious, uh, Jim? I can't think. What else will we decrease? Dust and grease lifts. Dust and grease lifts off the surface. Dust and grease lifts off the. Dust and grease lift. Wow, we've cleaned everything. These cylinders have fallen down from. A row of unmarked. Two yellow triangular buttons. A red triangle. Three triangular blue. Boggling my mind that shouldn't, but but he's there and he's there. This lens about the side. Oh, I don't think I took one of those. You already have that done. You fail to. These two things fit together like they were made for each other. Well, now I think we know why the Alassi pirates were so interested in finding out where Mud was getting these. Kirk, my friend! There was the... Perhaps the... Don't push your luck, Harry. Tall, transparent. Right. Okay. Well, let's punch up a quick save. Save new game. Replace. Right. Okay. Yep. Time has come for me to cheat again. So I think this is once again the game just hinting that I have to use something on something which is always a bit of a pain. Um, slight bit of cheating there, right? So, according to the walkthrough, we use Spock on. Neat. The device has finished loading, Captain. Thanks, Spock. I believe, Captain, that this weapon must be hooked up through the main weapons battery. However, I've already examined the weapons console, and the main weapons battery on this ship was completely destroyed in the action, which made her a derelict. Mr. Scott would have to go over this thoroughly. 
but I would recommend we try to take this weapon with us to the Enterprise. I don't think we should tinker with technology we don't understand, Spock, and I'm surprised you'd suggest such a thing. I agree that we should take it aboard the Enterprise. I'll try to raise the ship. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. A most interesting technique. If the Alassi gets hold of this, they'll make Mud seem like a perfect caretaker by comparison. Hmm, now oh, that did a lot. So let's see. Ah, there's a door there. This platform contains the control console for the ship's computer library. Data may be accessed by using this console. Apparently an information data screen, something like the display readers on the Enterprise. This is quite neat how they are kind of saying, here is an alien ship, these are the analogs. Well, I guess I will be used Spock on this. This seems to activate the ship's computer bank control node. Given the alien's predilection for multiples of three, it may be possible to use our tricorders to decipher the information carried in these data banks. That would be quite a find, Jim. This is an alien race unknown to us, and they are certain to have knowledge new to us. Were the universal translator available, this would be simple. With the Enterprise out of range, that's not an option, Mr. Spock. What else can you do? I believe if Dr. McCoy and I conjoin our two tricorders, we may be able to process enough sample data to get a basic understanding of the alien's computer system. Ah. This will completely tie up both our tricorders for an extended amount of time, however. So, let's give that a go. Nothing to report, Captain. There's nothing there requiring... There's nothing there requiring a... There's nothing there requiring... This seems to activate... That would be quite a fine... Yeah. The With the Enterprise... I believe if Dr. McCoy and I conjoin our two tricorders, we may be able to process enough sample data to get a basic understanding of the alien's computer system. This will completely tie up both our tricorders for an extended amount of time, however. Don't do that just yet. Hang, on. Oh. hang on, I thought it was another door there. Possibly just takes me to the bridge mind. Yeah, there's another way to the bridge. Hmm. Right. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know nothing happens. Believe it or not, editing some of these, I really did um, start to get uh, used to using, um, uh, used to seeing that nothing happens on the trace. down but to the left so that we go back in there instead of so what if we use probably should use spark for that you can't seem to make this
Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report. You can't seem to make this. Nothing happens. Hmm. Let's see, you're under. I think I have to. I think again, it might be one of these very, very delicate clicks. Mr. Spock, come take a look at this. I've never done that. This station definitely is configured differently from the one beside me. This seems to act... That would be quite a find, Jim. This is an alien race unknown to us. And they are certain to have knowledge new to us. Were the Universal Translator available, this would be simple. With the Enterprise out of range, that's not an option, Mr. Spock. What else can you do? I believe if Dr. McCoy and I conjoin our two tricorders, we may be able to process enough sample data to get a basic understanding of the alien's computer system. This will completely tie up both our tricorders for an extended amount of time, however. Apparently an inform... I fail to see the logic in that action, Captain. You look but see nothing of... This seemed to be use a tricorder. Ah, maybe. I'm gonna try it now here, just see if... Nothing to report. Mm. See, it's talking about a sphere in there, but I don't see the sphere, but I could be missing something. See, I'd say that's a sphere, but it's not lighting anything up. Nothing in there. No, no, this is very confusing. Yeah, that's all one object. Mr. Spock, come take a look. This station definitely... Apparently, an information... Nothing happens. Nothing happens. You can't seem to make this... Yeah, this is really confusing me. Hmm. Nothing to report. Nothing happens. Yes, I'm not just trying Nothing everything. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Uh. 
trying to see if there's something else I can do. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Tall, transparent columns run through the ceiling. Right, well, let's, uh, okay, I'm going to cheat some more. Anyone seeing a large orange spheroid? Uh, not my area. Of There's nothing there requiring a ship. Right, okay, I'm going to finish it here because I've hit my head into another brick wall and no amount of cheating is saving me. So, um, what I'll do is uh, wrap it up there. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry there wasn't more in it. I'm sorry, this was just me bumping my head against walls again, like a, a moth in a lampshade. Um, so, if you've enjoyed this, please let me know. It's always nice to hear from people. Please like and share um, and put something in the comments. Um, and if you want to talk to me, I'm at Pyman70. That's Pyman, all one word, and 70 the number on Twitter. Um, and I'm always appreciating comments and feedback. So, until then, bye for now. Well, thanks for watching, and bye for now.